I give God thanks this morning for our pastor, Pastor Felix, Pastor Catania, the leadership team here, the church family, our visitors. I greet you this morning. I had an encounter with pastor this week in class. Somebody said, rightly divide the word. <laughs> and so I'm going through the Urban Initiative program, and we have reached pastor's course. And so we're learning um, exegetical work on the scriptures. So he gave me a text from Romans. And so I went home, I look at my text, and I decided, I'm like, okay, I think I can preach this up here. So we got to class, I'm feeling good. <laughs> and his introduction was, this brother have nerves. <laughs> Deciding what he want to preach from the text. He said, brother, I gave you the entire thing to preach. And so I want to tell somebody this morning, it's important that we rightly divide the word of God. Amen. Amen. It was a laughing. Uh, oh, they were laughing. They were cracking up in class. Amen. There's a word from God this morning. I want to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Luke. We're going to the 35th verse. Luke chapter 18, 35 to 43. When you get there, say amen. And it reads, And as he drew near to Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. And hearing a crowd going by, he inquired what this meant. And they told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And those who were in front rebuked him, telling him, be silent. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he came there, he asked him, what do you want me to do for you? And he said, Lord, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, recover your sight. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him, glorifying God and all the people. When they saw it, gave praise to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father and our God, thank you, God, for this time that we'll share together. Lord, I move myself out of the way. Come and minister to your people through me. Father, we give this service to you, God, everything that we'll do from here. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, the thought I want to share with you, we can be assured that Jesus can heal and deliver us from anything. Again, we can be assured that Jesus can heal and deliver us from anything. If you should say to me, what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying to you that God can deliver you from anything. So you mean sicknesses? Diseases? Mental hisses. Yeah, he can deliver you from 
anything. So you really mean the things that keep me up in the night that I've been struggling with for all these years, you mean I can be free from these things? He can deliver you from anything. But it has been 25 years. He can deliver you. It has messed up my life. He can deliver you. But it is a mighty struggle that I'm going through. Well, but I'm here to tell you this morning. He can deliver you. This morning, as we embark on this journey and getting into the scripture, I want you to realize something. Do not box in Jesus by your feelings. Because he can deliver from anything. And so the first thing I want to share with you this morning in the way of literary context is this. In the time of this scripture, I want you to understand that Jesus' ministry was well advanced. This is just before or within, approximately within the month that the crucifixion was going to take place. So this is not the beginning or the introduction of Jesus. Jesus has been on the scene. He was famous. The works that he has done is famous. They heard about the healings. They knew about the different things that have happened before now. So Jesus in that region was very popular at the time. So everybody would have heard about Jesus. Everybody would have known that his ministry was in full function at this time. And so here, Jesus in his ministry near Jericho. And he's getting on passing with the crowd because remember he's famous. People is following him because all the signs, the wonders, the teaching, the things that he have done. And so here he's passing this blind man begging. And so the first thing I want to share with you for you to understand that Jesus can heal you from anything is that Jesus is accessible. And so here, here it is in verse 35 to 37. Hear what it says. And as he drew near to Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. And hearing the crowd going by, he inquired, what does this mean? And they told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. It may be the first time in his life that he says to himself, a light bulb went up, but I can access Jesus because he's passing by me. I want us to understand this morning that the journey we are on on this prayer and fasting Verse 38, it says, this man had the ability to cry out to Jesus because he's accessible. We're not praying because we want to find Jesus. We're praying because Jesus is accessible. And so you'll hear testimonies like this. While we're going through the fast and one week in, I want a closer walk. You know why? He's accessible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
And so, because Jesus is accessible, we can go to him in prayer. We can talk to him. He's not restricted. He's not just passing. Remember, he was passing by this man. But Jesus, in today, in the 21st century, in, 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 in 2020, Jesus is where and wherever you are, he's accessible. In your bedroom, he's accessible. On your commutes. Is accessible. In your darkest hours. Even when you don't think he's there. Jesus is accessible. And so. We have access. You don't got to knock on anybody's door. You have access. And if you tell me, I, well, I don't know Jesus like that. <laughs> That's why you're here today. Because people that have accessed Jesus already, that's why when we have altar calls, we have people up here to help you to access Jesus. So the next thing I want to share with you Don't let obstacles stop you, stop you from getting access to Jesus. So let's, let's see what the scripture says in verse 38 and 39. And he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And those who were in front rebuked him and tell him, be silent. But he cried the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Don't let the obstacles stop you from accessing Jesus. And so I remember last week as we met in the back, the prayer team and myself, I used this analogy. I said, if, if your television is what is stopping you from accessing Jesus, you need to do a number of things. I said, first, if it's plugged into a strip, you need to plug it out. Take that strip, walk down to your basement, probably put it in a box, and tape that thing up. And they're like, okay, we can see that. Then I said, you don't stop there because, remember, it's stopping you from access. So that remote, you got to take out the batteries. And you got to put the remote somewhere different from where the batteries are. And I said, no, it has no source of power. But if every time you walk past that thing, it's still speaking to you. If you can lift it up, you need to lift that thing up for this season because you need to access Jesus and put it in a closet somewhere. I said, if it's already mounted on the wall, because I can't allow the obstacles to stop me, I'm taking out my toolkit. I'm, I'm taking that thing down. And I'm putting it because, listen, he's accessible. And so because your obstacle will stop you from getting access. These people telling this blind man. They can see and they're telling him, be quiet. I come to tell somebody in this 21 day a fasting that we're doing. Don't be quiet. <laughs> when, there's a, when there's a prior hour available, don't be quiet. This is not the season for silence. Yeah. 
I don't know what your obstacles are this morning. I don't know what is stopping you from accessing an accessible God. But I'm telling you this morning, just like the TV, whatever you need to do to get access, you need to do it. The other thing I want to share with you, because remember, I told you in the beginning that Jesus, be assured, he can heal and deliver you from anything. Next thing I want to share with you is that Jesus is willing to heal and deliver you. So let's hear what the scripture says. The scripture says here in verse 40 and 41. And Jesus stopped and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he came there, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me recover my sight. He pushed past the obstacles. He cried the more. He got Jesus' attention. I'm talking to somebody this morning. This first week, We've been pushing past the obstacles. <laughs> this first week, I believe in my hearts of art that because we made it through this first week of the discourse that we are on, <laughs> Jesus, we have his attention now. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And because we have Jesus' attention, he's going to begin to ask you some questions. What can I do for you? You press past the obstacle. He begin to ask you, what can I do for you? Well, Lord, I need to get in the gym. <laughs> But I can't find the strength to begin. What can I do for you? Well, God, I need this kind of lifestyle change. But every time I start, I stop. What can I do for you? I've been struggling with this stuff for 25 years. What can I do for you? While you go through this time of fasting and prayer, <laughs> whatever lifestyle change that you need to make when you push past those obstacles, He's going to ask you, Derek, what can I do for you? Shonda, what can I do for you? He's going to be, begin to ask you, what can I? So, so look at it this way. Our pastor is such a visionary that before we start the fast, he said, when you go to God, be specific. We're going for families. We're going for community. Hello, somebody. What can I do for you? If he came here today and said, what can, he would realize that everybody in here that have been praying hour by hour has been saying, Lord, touch our community. 
Lord, touch our church. Lord, touch leadership. Lord. And so that's the corporate setting. Personally. That lifestyle change. That will take us through this decade. That lifestyle change. That will shape the next level of our life. It's not just dealing with us corporately. It's also asking you, what can I? Because you have been faithful. Hour by hour by hour. Team by team by team. What can I do for you? You've been praying about my stuff. My people in Aurora. My church, RCF. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, Jesus is about to ask you, what can I do for you? Not only is Jesus willing to heal this man by asking him, what can I do for you? He's able because he's sovereign. He's able to do this because he's sovereign. So let's hear what the scripture says here. Verse 42 and 43. And Jesus said to him, recover your sight. This is exciting. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and follow him and glorify God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He's able because he's sovereign. He has all power and authority. Here, he didn't even lay his hands on this man. Jesus didn't even have to go there and touch him. He, he spoke in power and authority. He just spoke the word. I'm here to tell somebody in 2020 that Jesus is going to speak your deliverance in this season. That 25 years of stuff that you've been going through. That, that thing that have been keeping you up in the night. Those pills you got to be taking. Those mental issues you've been having. He can heal you and deliver you from anything. Anything. So what are you talking about? You really mean that Jesus has the power to deliver me from anything. So let's go hack Jaharas. Let's go. Hacks Jaharas to testify to us. If you ask him this morning, he'll tell you. While I went to get Jesus, my daughter died. I thought it was over. But he came to my house. He said, Don't worry yourself. She's not dead. She's sleeping. Some things you think is dead to you, Jesus call it sleep. And so whatever you're calling dead in your life that need to come alive, Jesus don't say it's dead. He says sleeping. He said, I'm coming to wake it up. He went into the house, shut out the obstacles. And when he shut out the obstacles, he said, daughter, come alive. 
I'm here to tell a son and daughter of Christ in this season, you're about to come alive like you have never <laughs> been before. I wish somebody would get excited. You're about to come alive like you've never come alive before. But Brother Lionel, it's really dead. It's been dead a long time. Well, we're going to Lazarus. It's been that, Brother Lionel, I'm telling you, it's been really dead. It's past dead. It's decaying. Oh, 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 it can heal you and deliver you from that. Let's ask Martha and Mary about what happened to their brother. When they were crying and, and they said, well, you'll see your brother again. Oh, Lord, have mercy. On that day of the resurrection, Jesus, oh, he has a way. Jesus said to them, I am sovereign on the resurrection. I'm the life. He's sovereign. He has all the authority and the power to deliver you from whatever you're going through. They told him, Master, you don't want to go. Oh, people have been telling you, labeling you by what you're going through. This blind beggar. Don't go up there, Master. Don't go up there, Master. They, they must be stinking by now. He's sovereign. He can heal you from anything. He can deliver you from anything. But you say to me, but that was way back there in the Bible. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Can I get a witness now? Ask Deacon. Lord, have mercy. What they said should have taken him out. Lord, have mercy. I don't know why my witnesses is so near to the front. But ask Sister Pat. If Jesus is not sovereign... Oh, oh, well, ask Pastor Gilbert. If Jesus is not sovereign, when the doctor says, go home, the report is, get your house in order. The sovereign master stepped down and said, not so. The sovereign master showed up and said, not so. So as I take my seat this morning, Jesus is able. We can be assured that he can heal us and deliver us from anything because he's accessible. Because he's willing. And because he is able. Because he's sovereign. I don't know what your situation is this morning. But while you're going through the season of prayer and fasting, I'm here to tell you. 
He can do it because he's sovereign. Leave this story with you. I was watching Christian television. This international preacher, they were interviewing him. And they, they said to him, how did you come in contact with Jesus? He was like, oh, it, it, it was the strangest thing. He said, I was sitting in my house. He said, I was, I had my pistol beside me. He said, my life has been so rough. I knew it was over. But he said, I was flipping through the channels. He said, I don't know what happened, but I stopped on a channel and someone was pointing at the screen. You there, sitting on that sofa, with your pistol beside you. He said that got his attention. I'm telling somebody here this morning, he's able. The man said, now he sat up in his seat on that sofa. And the preacher said, I know you've been struggling the last few days about how you're going to do it. But he said, you have finally made up your mind that it's happening tonight. I'm here to tell you that Jesus loves you. And he has a purpose to use you as a minister of the gospel. Will you pray this prayer with me? He got down on his knees in his living room. What? Living room, flipping through channels. He said, I prayed that prayer with so much intensity because there was no way this man in my TV could know that I was sitting on my couch and the intentions I have. He said, I travel the world telling my testimony, sharing with people. I'm telling somebody, Jesus is accessible and he can deliver you from anything. This morning, what do you want him to do for you. So if you're here and you don't know him like that, you really don't know Jesus like that. He's here today. And he's always been here. But because you came today for this message, this is your time. This is your access. This is your season. He's here. He asked that man, what can I do for you? Today I'm asking you, what do you want from Jesus. So as our pastor is about to come, he's accessible. He can deliver you from anything. 
God bless you.